Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at webhooks. Let's see if we can get this done real fast. Now, what is a webhook? The way I think of a webhook is it's in, it's a REST API route that tells you, all right, I got the data that you posted to me. I'm gonna go do some stuff now. So when you as another server need to communicate with my server, my server takes your data. It says, okay, I got it, you're good. And then it runs off and it like processes your data, mines it for Bitcoin or whatever, and I just do whatever I want to with it. Where this is useful is you have applications like Stripe. Stripe is a billing application. Uh, Stripe will send you information on, you know, whatever. Let's say a customer buys a shirt and you don't want to send out the shirt or start printing the shirt until you actually have the customer's funds. Uh, so the payment from the bank needs to be processed or whatever. And then after it gets processed, eventually, uh, you know, Stripe says, all right, we actually have the money. And then it sends you a, a webhook request where it says, here's the customer's, you know, invoice information. Uh, and just to remind you, you know, you can send out the shirt. It's not how this works, but you get the idea. They need to contact you for some reason. So they do this webhook thing where it's automated. So it goes to your webhook and then you get an event from Stripe with some data that says, I don't know, random stuff and a message that says, send them the, the shirt, right? If you aren't familiar with this, uh, a lot of times the webhook endpoint tutorials from different uh, websites, they'll tell you exactly how to do this. So here in the case of Stripe, they tell you your endpoint must be configured to read event objects. You come over to the event object page, they give you this giant thing here. So you would probably want to save this in a model somehow. Uh, alternatively, you can take out the stuff you care about and store the rest of it in a JSONB column, which is what I'm going to be doing. So this allows you to store like all of this in a JSONB column. So if you ever need to find something you don't necessarily store all the time, like live mode, whatever that means, you can then say, all right, this is in the JSONB column. I can just come in here and check. Yes, the live mode or the live mode, whatever this is supposed to say, is set to false. So that's one aspect of this. The other thing is because uh, a lot of these things depend on, you know, server to server communication, you want it to be snappy. So even here in the case of Stripe, it says your endpoint must quickly return a successful status code of 200 prior to any complex logic that could cause a timeout. So uh, right here, for example, you must return a 200 response before updating a customer's invoice as paid in your accounting system. What does that mean? It means you take in your your webhook request you can very quickly just like save it to your database or something and then as soon as you do you just you return a status code so what we're going to do is we're going to say all right we need to save this to our database we have a record of this webhook we're going to fire off a background job that says go update the customers whatever stripe was saying i don't care and then we're going to uh, before that webhook job actually runs it'll be queued then before it runs we're going to return a status of okay so that's how we're gonna do this. Now, another area where this can be useful is let's say you have a GitHub repository. So I have this one right here, brand new repo. I come over to settings, I come over to webhooks. Uh, I add a webhook, I create a payload URL, uh, which is just gonna be uh, this one right here. Let me just grab this and come over here. We can paste this in and then we can do like slash GitHub. The way we're gonna set this up is all of the webhooks are gonna go to slash webhooks and then it's gonna take an optional argument uh, which is just gonna be like slash GitHub or slash Stripe or slash Discord, et cetera. So let's say every time you make a pull request to this repository, you want it to fire off a webhook request. It'll go to your local support 3000 slash webhook slash GitHub, and then you can have access to your, your pull request. You can then take that pull request and add it in your Discord bot so it can post it in the channel and everyone can laugh, right? So that's just what we're doing here, basically. It's pretty simple stuff at the end of the day. Uh, so let's come over here and let's create this. We're going to do a Rails new video. We'll do a dash D Postgres. We'll do a CD into our video project and run a code dot. So again, the basic premise of this is it's just like a fancy REST API route. It's not really a REST API route. People are going to get upset if you call it that, but it's, it's just another API endpoint where people can come in, they can post some stuff. Uh, and then you do stuff if you want to, but here the people is a server uh, and you're making sure that you're responding in a timely manner. So to actually do this, first things first, we need to generate the scaffold. So we're gonna do a Rails G scaffold for the webhook. It's gonna have a source of type string. That is where we store if this is from GitHub or Stripe or whatever, because it has that slash GitHub or slash Stripe at the end of it. The data is JSON B because it's Postgres. So we're using JSON B. If you're using SQLite, this is going to just be JSON. 
then a message of type string and an event of type string. The message is just in case you get something from Discord. Sometimes they send you a message that says ping and you have to respond with a message that says pong. Maybe you want to store that. I don't know. The event might be like the pull request event or whatever for some other webhook. It, it really depends on what you're trying to integrate with. I'm just making up something contrived here so that we can, uh, you know, just have an example on the screen to look at. But OK, let's go ahead and let's run this. Now let's create our background job. Let's do a Rails G job and we'll do this for a webhook job that'll generate something in app jobs, webhook job that we can then use. Go ahead and do a Rails DB colon migrate command to migrate our database. Uh, but we have to drop our database because I already have this one created. So let's do a DB colon drop, DB colon create, DB colon migrate uh, to completely nuke this from orbit so that my Postgres behaves. There we go. Now let's do a Rails S and come over to localhost port 3000 slash webhooks. So we have a new webhook button. We don't need that. Let's come into our controllers or actually let's start in our routes. So we'll come into config and our routes.rb. I think this is the best place to start to clear up the question of what I mean by these routes. First things first for our resources, we don't want all of them. So we're only going to do this for the create action, the index action, the show action and the destroy. We'll get rid of the edit, the update and the new. Then we'll say for the uh, webhooks, we'll do a post webhooks to a colon source. This is where our URL is going to live. So this might be, uh, you know, we might have, let me grab it from my, I don't have my notes anymore. Uh, we'll just say this might be local host port 3000 slash webhooks slash GitHub, or it might be slash Stripe, or it might be uh, slash discord server with the bros or whatever. I don't know, whatever, whatever you want this to be. Uh, in this case, this is what, this is what we'll store in the source of our webhooks, which is what's going to go right here, right? So there we go. That takes care of our routes. I'll go ahead and close this. Let's come up to our controllers and our webhooks controller. We'll scroll up to the top in here. We only need the show and the destroy for the set webhook. Uh, we'll then do a skip before action, verify authenticity token only for the create, because this is for the API request. We can get rid of the edit and the new action real quick in the uh, we can also get rid of the update right here or the destroy down here. We'll leave it like this so it'll redirect us. That's fine for the create action right here. Uh, we need to do a little bit of magic. So the way this is going to work is in our parameters down here. We have the params dot permit a source data message and event. Now, I don't think we're passing in the data, so I'm going to get rid of that, but I'll leave in the source. And then up here in the create, we can just real quick say at webhook dot source is equal to param source exactly. And then at webhook dot data is equal to params. This will store the entire params in here, uh, but this will also include like the controllers and stuff. So optionally, you can see you can say at webhook dot data is equal to um, params dot accept. Uh, and then you can get rid of the controller or something. Uh, and the action if you want to. Just, you know, pretty contrived stuff. Uh, and then finally, your uh, event, because you're going to be passing that in directly, should, uh, same as your message, just be set automatically. So we do that. We then don't respond to do a format. Instead, we just say there is no HTML option here. There's only JSON in this world. But the first thing we want to do is we want to queue up the webhook job. We'll say perform later and we'll pass in this webhook. So we've saved this. Now we're going to do in the background some webhook stuff. After we do that, we'll just come in here and we'll just do whatever GitHub Copilot gives us. We'll say render JSON status OK. Uh, and then you can also do another status OK if you want to. Uh, it really doesn't matter uh, however you want to handle this, right? So the, uh, the error here needs to also change, which will be something like this. We render some JSON with some errors, webhook errors, status, unprocessable entity, if that's the way you want to go doesn't matter to me. It'll ultimately depend on whatever the uh, documentation you're using is like expecting in the event of an error, right? Okay, so that takes care of the create. Let's come into our app views webhooks. Actually, let's start up our server and come over to local support 3000 because it should error out. There we go. So it's telling us we don't have this new webhook path. So let's come into our index page. The index page has a new webhook route. Let's get rid of that. Save this. Refresh. There you go. Uh, the other thing we are going to have to do, I'll just do it real quick. We have to come into our show action. And in here, we have to get rid of this edit, this webhook link. Go ahead and save that. 
Uh, now we should be good to go. So how do we test this? Well, we can't use GitHub because this requires us to use ngrok, which is really cringe. It makes us have to set up a whole HTTPS thing that's exposed to the outside world. Good way to test it, uh, but for the sake of this video, it's really not necessary. So instead, we'll just come over to our terminal here in another window, and we'll just do a quick little curl command. So in here, what we can do is we can say, all right, we want to curl uh, with a dash, dash X and a post of dash D. And then in these quotes, we can say our message is gonna be ping from like Discord or whatever, and our event is gonna be pull request, I guess. So again, it doesn't really make sense to store it like this, but if you have parameters you need to include here like this, this can work. It depends on what you're working with. If you're working internally with some other company, uh, they might have very specific requirements here. So this is where you, you might have to customize it a bit and have these extra arguments or whatever. Uh, and then we'll do HTTP colon slash slash localhost port 3000 slash webhooks. And we'll say this is a GitHub uh, pull request. So that might be the webhook that we put in, right? Go ahead and run this. We'll get a status of okay. We can come over to our other window. We can scroll up a bit. And we can see right here, started posts. So this is where our request starts. Processes the webhook as a create action. Makes sense. Inserts into webhook all of this stuff. Our source is a uh, GitHub pull request. Our data is gonna be all of this stuff right here. This is like our JSON stuff. So the entire params were put in here. So we can see the controller was the webhooks controller. The action was the create action. This is where you might need to remove this stuff depending on what you want. Cause you might not care. It's pretty, you know, obvious. It says my Java professor would say it's intuitively obvious to the casual observer uh, that the only webhooks controller with only a create action was the thing that caused this webhook event to exist, right? Uh, but then we also have the message of ping and the event of pull request. The important thing here is after we do all of this stuff, uh, we can scroll down here we can see it renders, it finishes with create. It enqueues this job and then it says completed 200 okay in 26 milliseconds. I would consider 26 MS pretty timely. And then after that happens, it then comes down here and it runs whatever's in this job. So if you want to customize this job, you can come into your jobs folder, your webhook. You can say this takes in a, uh, we just said it webhook. And then in here, you can do whatever you want to. So you can just say, uh, I don't know, like webhook or puts a webhook job and then call webhook.inspect. So let me hit enter a couple times. I'll come over here and I'll run this again. We can run this. And now over here, we can see uh, it does the same stuff. And then down here, it has this webhook job colon. And then in here, we can see what's in the webhook job. So instead of processing it down here, we're just inspecting it or whatever. But this is where you would do additional stuff like send out the customer's t-shirt, right? So that is effectively it. If we come over here and we refresh, we can see all of this data in here. Source is the webhook or the GitHub pull request. Data has our event, our action, which is the create action and the controller. The source, which is the GitHub pull request, the webhooks controller, the message of ping, you get the idea. It does all of that for us. And then let's say we have another one uh, and this one is from Stripe. So we'll go ahead and we'll run this one. We can refresh. We can see this one has a Stripe uh, source in it. But anyways, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.